So for our puck lights, we bought two inch 2700 Kelvin dimmable Armacost puck lights. All right, so we just figured out to install this, you need a two and one eighth hole saw. Nobody has that. I have two inches, I have two and a quarter. Two and a quarter fits it. We're just a little bit unsure. You know, it's gonna be vibrating. In the meantime, we're going to be setting up our temporary DC distribution where this upper cabinet is gonna go. So we're gonna mount this here. And this is our positive circuits. We're gonna mount a negative circuit across from it. As usual, everything that you see us install in this video will be linked below for you to check out if you need to. Okay, so I've isolated the circuits that we're going to be installing. We've got two fans and we have the three lights in the back. So now what we're doing is we're taking our AC to DC converter. PowerMax AC to DC converter. I should be able to plug this in and then run these terminals over to my fuse block and that will complete my grid tied electrical system. All right, so we've got the charger mounted. We've got the positive line running to the positive fuse block. We don't yet have a negative fuse block. So I think we're just gonna test this out. But before I do that, I need to ground this. All right, so I've pulled the eight gauge ground wire out of Gilligan Phantom because we don't have any wire that's this size. I have grounded it to the metal of the bus. Remember guys, this is all temporary. This is just so we can get lights and fans running while we're working on the bus. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh wait, well we didn't connect this yet, did we? Oh. Right? <laughs> all right, so we completely forgot that we haven't wired the fan, so. All systems go. Oh, I heard the beep. Great success. Yaksha mash. I just got back from Lowe's with a couple things that we need to move forward with this project. We got the two and an eighth inch hole saw. Why do I have to own this? And I also got a little bit of a bolt clamping situation. I'm gonna temporarily clamp these negatives together. So I just finished rigging up this little temporary negative station. I don't know if this is correct or safe. It's going to be temporary and only on while I'm in here. Don't copy it if it doesn't make sense to you. Got my little green light Tell me that this has power. And when I put in this, I should hear a beep from the fan. So the fan is running. <laughs> I just love electrical wiring. It's just like experimenting and it's fun. When it's low voltage, it's not much risk. Really cannot find this cable. We're gonna have to take this ceiling panel at least somewhat down. When's the last time you saw it? You were putting this wood up? I'll take this panel off and see where it goes off. Would it be under the wall or above it? In between. <laughs> oh. All right, so after taking off the ceiling panel and the side panel, we figured out that it was over here. It had gotten pulled back a bit. A little setback, but that's all right. Nice. <laughs> Beep. Beep. All right, so now that we got the fans running, it's time to put in some of these lights. Let's make an irreversible hole. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, I wired the wrong side. Why did I do that? We just got this dimmer switch rigged up. We're about to try and turn on the lights for the first time. Woo, let there be light. <laughs> All right, so I need another fuse. Five amps, you think? All right, so here goes the fuse and the dimmer switch. Hey. Oh, let there be light. There's light. That's good. Oh. High five to you guys. You guys did all this. Whoa, this is freaking strong. Oh, yeah, we do not need three. I don't think we need three. It's nice that I finally have some light to film with yeah. in here. Illuminate your face. So let's put in some more lights. We got two more closet lights and then two bathroom lights. Was 
Doesn't look right. Oh my God, turn this off, what did I do? Well guys, I messed up. I hit the wrong mark and I made this in the wrong location. Sam is so pissed off that he just left. He was not prepared to be on camera. I'm just kidding, he's not mad at all. He's just gotta go take a meeting. Now we have to figure out a graceful way to cover this. Pick the wrong mark. Don't beat yourself up too much. How you know that Nova's been somewhere. You see little collections like this. I'm such a proud father. Crazy and amazing. Okay guys, before I put in these last lights, I gotta show you what I'm actually doing. Tools I'm using are a box cutter, wire crimpers, it's got three sizes, and wire strippers. Now we are splicing a light into a series right here. We're gonna be cutting this wire here. Knife, where are you? I spend most of my time losing and looking for tools. Sometimes they're just in my pocket. Okay, so now I take a knife, take off this sheathing. Don't cut too hard or you could cut through the wire. Once you have that done, it'll just slide off. And we'll do the other side. All right. Wire strippers have a stranded setting and a solid copper setting. We want to use a stranded setting because we're working with stranded wires. By the way, this is marine grade tinned copper wire. We want to leave about a quarter of an inch. All right, now we've got our light. We don't actually need any of this stuff besides this right here. It comes with really a lot of cable. We don't need all that. Go ahead and snip these guys. Now we got our light. We're gonna do the same thing on here. We're going to strip this. This is an 18 or 20 gauge wire, and we are going to be crimping it into our other wire. It's probably better fittings for doing this, like some kind of 12 volt wire nuts or some kind of push connectors, but I'm just working with what I have, making sure that I have a nice, solid, tight crimp. And then I've got the heat shrink to kind of like secure it even further. So I like to kind of just wrap this wire around right here and then push in my fitting. Now I gotta keep that nice and tight until I can crimp it. Okay. And that is nice and tight. You can see nothing's gonna come out. I'm pulling on it. Gotta do the same thing with black. All right, it's on there. Gotta crimp that. We're almost done. Okay. You do need a little bit of strength to squeeze that with one hand. Now we've got the other side of, spade, of the spade connectors for the other side. Crimp that on. Oh, we, oh why? Something's up with these crimpers. For some reason, when it comes to these, they're just not getting it tight enough. So I think I'm ready to get a better pair of crimpers. Hopefully this one will do it. No, why? All right, so I've crimped on these automotive ones because my crimper makes them way tighter. It's gonna be fine. But I'll show you how the heat shrink helps make this connection super tight and safe long-term. Once you have everything crimped, you're gonna take a heat gun and heat up the plastic sheathing around this. And now basically stuff's gonna be all melted down and also waterproof it. All right, so we're gonna push this up. This just pushes into place. Remove this guy and as soon as I put in a fuse. All right, here we go. Cool. All right, so now we've got a ton of light in here. These lights are really nice. They're really high quality. They're 2700 Kelvin, which is about as warm as you can get. I don't think you could go any cooler and be happy in my opinion. 2700 is the way to go. Hope you guys learned something. Talk to you soon. Boom. Whoa. Let there be light. Let there be light. It's lit. We could do surgery in here. <laughs>